Hey everybody, this is Sony. I have moved my car because um, I don't want to be driving and doing this and I'm on my way to the gym and right before I left the house, I remembered yesterday that I had mentioned something on a video that I put up on um, under Eden Life and um, you can go, you can get through. You can get through. Oh wow. <laughs> There's so much room for that person to go through. And now they're honking at me. As if you can't get through. Like, there's all this room. This is happening right now because I'm doing this. And this has been kind of going on today for me. But you know what? That's fine. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sheree Ray. Have fun. Okay. I'm going to turn it off. Okay. So, um... Yesterday, I was given a message real quick about a vision that the Lord had given me on the second part about um, the mummy effect and God's taking off the wraps and the bandages and things like that. Also, I remembered about Lazarus. If you don't know who Lazarus is, God raised him from the dead. And I don't know if he had bandages on him like a mummy, but I, don't, I didn't even mention that yesterday. But the fact was, if you look at the video on the second part, you'll get the revelation that I got from the Lord about how God is um, bringing people back to life and Things that were you thought were dead in your life are actually coming back. Dreams that you thought were gone, the Lord's bringing back. Even if it's not like a physical thing that you see, it might be something inside your heart or something in your mind or just something within yourself that's just totally changing and transforming. Something that maybe you thought was gone. So anyway, um, while I was doing the message, while I was giving the message on the first part, which was about... Um, it was about warfare. I explained to you guys two things that I went through in warfare and how I got through it from beginning to end. So as I was going through it, I remember that I opened up the Bible. I just like just did this. And when I opened it and opened up to Romans chapter 118, which said, and I'm clearing the, I'm going to clarify this because it's going to sound like God is being mean and he's not where it says, but God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness so with that said it may seem like you're like well god doesn't love me then because i'm sinful i'm wicked and you know what i maybe i don't know the truth about jesus so if i don't know the truth about jesus then how am i supposed to not be sinful and wicked and all that so i was really when i was reading this right before leaving to go to the gym i was really thinking to myself why is it that um, we feel, you know, that maybe, maybe God doesn't care, you know, if, if, if we're the way we are and, and I put myself in the bucket with everybody else, then why is it that, that he feels this way about us? He's telling us that we're wicked people and we're sinful, so why should we even give God a shot at all, right? But then I kept reading. So I'm going to keep reading here. And it says here, um, I just want to clarify that God's not trying to be mean. He's actually really good. He's a really good loving God. And so I'm just going to go ahead and and re keep reading after verse 18. Because then you're going to get to understand why he said what he said. And sometimes when we read the Bible, we read it and we only read that one verse. And then we're like, Pah! Well, forget it or something right because we just read that one verse and then that's it like our brain only only captured that one thing but if you keep reading like really read between the lines read it then you're gonna see what's up so verse 19 says they know the truth so he's talking about wicked sinful mean people um even people in the church who um I'll keep reading, I'll keep reading. Because it's not about me, it's about what the word says. So you're going to see. They know the truth, me, you, or people who maybe don't yet. <clears throat> they know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. So how has he made it obvious to you that he exists? 20 says, for ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, and his divine nature. So when we look at nature, we look at the sky, we look at the earth, and we look at all the invisible things that maybe we don't see him like face to face, but we see the world, like we see 
everything, the trees, you know, we see birds, we see things that are happening. Whether we're sleeping or we're awake, the earth and things in this earth are working. Things are working. Animals are procreating. The sun's coming up one place and it's going down another. So the world is going and going and going. And whether we're on the earth or not, it's going with or without us. So God is like saying, look, you can see me by just open your eyes and look around. And then he says, so they have no excuse for not knowing God. So basically God is just saying, look, you don't have any excuse for not coming to some kind of conclusion that God actually exists. And if he exists, then why does he exist? And if he exists, then what does this whole thing mean? And then that's where you kind of go and take it upon yourself. Hola, thank you. Que bonito tu también, gracias. That's my cousin. Um, you take it upon yourself to be like, well, okay. So then you can do your own research. That's what I did. I just did my own research as to, okay, why am I even here, right? And so... That's that. And then 21 says, yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. So, I mean, when was the last time you even gave God any thanks or anything for the fact that you get up in the morning, you go to sleep at night, you have the energy to go to work, you have the energy to eat and actually digest it. Um, you're not sick. And if you are, you know, you don't have to be because the word of God talks about you being able to get healed. And I know I've been healed of all kinds of stuff. And one of them was a sciatic nerve. Um, another one was like a, a, a tumor and just all kinds of different things, you know, that have happened to me over the years. And um, God has healed me from all of it. And it wasn't the doctor. I mean, yeah, I had to go get surgery once, but I wouldn't even be able to get better if it wasn't for him because he's the one who created the sky, the water. What did it say here? He created everything. And so we don't have an excuse for not knowing him. Because he has qualities. And just because they're invisible, it doesn't mean that the qualities aren't there. So he says, yes, even give that you wouldn't worship him and you are not even giving him thanks. All he wants is a thank you sometimes. Just give him a thank you every once in a while. Just say thank you to him. You know, thank you for my baby, that my baby came out well. Just give God thank yous. He wants those. He wants to hear from you. I read it the other day to you guys where it says that he wants a relationship with you. It's not too big of a thing for you to think, why would the God of everything, the God of this universe, want to conversate with me? And I think that's where, where we kind of get, get it messed up, where we're thinking in our mind. It's too small for us to think in our mind. Don't even try to think about God and you and talking to him in your mind because your mind is going to mess it all up. It's going to screw it all up. Remember Jesus and that Jesus came in human form, like with eyes and ears and a mouth. And he was walking around in a body like us. And so the Bible says in the book of John that he came on this earth as God and he died as a son of God. And so you should be able to relate to God in that way, like a human person. Don't think of him just like this foreign big object that's too big. He is big. And um, you're big too. You've got so many, we've got things inside of us that haven't even been done yet. So when God was giving me the vision yesterday about Lazarus, like about the mummy effect and that God is taking off the bandages off of you and you're coming back to life, it's because there's things and there's secrets inside of you, dreams that maybe went to bed a long time ago and maybe things you think and you aspire that you want to do that you didn't think you can maybe do or you're not good enough, you don't have enough money, you don't have enough connections or Whatever it is, a broken marriage, God's going to bring it all back. And so um, if you look at my video at Eden Life, you'll check it out and you'll see, you know, whatever I was talking about. But then it says here, as a result, their minds became dark and confused. So our minds can become dark and confused. Like we can, God is light and we can shut ourselves away from him. It's our decision. And then it says, and instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshipped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So I have seen, you know, where people worship an idol like a statue. And I'm not knocking my Catholic people because they're Christians too. They believe in Jesus too. So I'm not even going there. I did my confirmation and my primera comunión and all of that. I mean, I did it, okay? And I even remember when I used to... Um, when, they, when I was in Catholic school, when I was a kid, they would teach me the um, uh, Holy Mary. 
prayer. And I was, I didn't even, I didn't know anything. I just remember being in the room with the kids and the nuns. And the nuns would be like, okay, go ahead and tell me, you know, can you tell me the, the um, Holy Mary? And I was like, okay, you know, I'm over here trying to remember it. And then I said, um, Holy Mary full of grapes. And the reason I thought it was Holy Mary full of grapes is because I, um, would see pictures of Mary everywhere with grapes all around her and cheese and like a bottle of wine or something. So I thought it was normal for me to say Holy Mary full of grapes. <laughs> that right there is, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> we can have a misunderstanding about the Lord. And, and as a child, I may have known like, okay, I heard about Jesus and I would only see him on the cross on a statue hung up I didn't see him face to face and when I thought about his mom I just thought about her surrounded with grapes so I didn't realize and understand as a baby no one explained to me even though I was in Catholic school for a little bit and I hated it there because everybody was mean to me and I was really quiet and timid and scared all the time so I didn't even like it there but it was just that they didn't teach me Jesus that's all they didn't teach me that he's actually alive and he's not stuck inside of a, a piece of wood. And so when God right here is talking about, and instead of worshiping the glorious ever living God, they worshiped idols and made him look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So all God is saying is go straight to him, go straight to the source. Don't, you know, diddle daddle around and be like, hey, you know, well, let me just like go to a priest and I'm not, you know, knocking priests because I mean, they're celibate. I, I can't be a priest. There's no way I can be celibate. I got to get married and I'm going to get married. And, and the celibacy thing is not for me. It is right now. But I'm talking about like they give their life to God to where they are only, you know, married to God. And I just can't do that. So, you know what I'm saying? They have a gift. They seriously, for real. Hi, prima. That's my other prima right there. I love you too. I hope I get to go to Cali sometime and see everybody that I don't ever even get to see when I go. But I want to make it a point the next time I go over there to see some family that every time I've gone, I've not even been able to go and see you. So I love you too, Karina, very much. And so, um, so then the thing is that then you might feel abandoned and just don't feel abandoned. Just know that God wants you to, he wants your attention and that's all. God wants your attention. It says here, God has abandoned them to do whatever shameful things that they wanted it to, to do desires that they had in their heart. It says in verse 24, as a result, they did very degrading things to their bodies and I won't go any further. I won't go any further, but, um, I just wanted to say that. The Lord is not upset with anybody. He loves everybody and he just wants you to understand that wicked things, sinful things take you away from God, but um, know that all he wants is your attention. Just give him a simple thank you every day and if you can and then um, and that's it. That's all. All right. I love y'all. Um, understand and know that God's with you. He's got your back. He's your strong rock. He is the one and only uh, Jehovah Jireh. He will provide all your needs. And so in Jesus' name, I pray for anybody watching, if they have some needs that they need, I pray that those needs be provided for them in the name of Jesus Christ, whether it be emotional um, or physical or financial. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, my God. You're worthy, you're holy, you're mighty, you're awesome. Thank you, Lord, that you're not mad at us. You do not. You are not friends with wickedness. You are not friends with sin because sin is what takes us away from you and it takes us from the true joy that we can have on our everyday life. And we just thank you, my God, so much for the sacrifice that you did on the cross. So I thank you, Lord, that I hope that I clarified what I said yesterday when I read um, that God is angry and all that. And he's actually angry with, with the devil and he, he just doesn't like him. And But he's already beat him, so we don't got to worry about any of that. All right. Love you. Bye.